Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Someone once said that the loss of national identity is the greatest defeat a nation can know. Some, and also I'll be speaking on that. National cohesion and the way forward. So about two days ago, I was speaking with a friend and when he asked me the way forward for Nigeria or what I could see in the future of our dear nation. It draws into a conversation on how divided young people are in Nigeria along um, tribalism and religious lines and how we as a generation cannot bring about the new political order if we continue to be this divided. Envision this, a young couple romantically involved working towards getting married, but failing to build a proper foundation based on love and respect and then going ahead to get married. That union is most likely doomed to fail because the foundation we as Nigerians do not have an identity. Who is a Nigerian? What defines our identity? What is our Nigerian dream? We so far have failed in answering these questions and understanding what brings us together as a people. What is the glue that sticks us together? We are more aware of our differences, more than the benefits we can glean from working together, aspiring to a higher ideal, not defined by religion, tribe, or political loyalties. A young lady asked me what I thought was the Nigerian dream when I went to speak at an event about a year ago. I thought for a while, and this was my answer. I asked her to define our common struggle, and she succinctly defined it in one word, inequality. I told her she had her answer. A Nigerian dream is for all of us to be treated equally in a society that only works for their lives. I am defining the Nigerian dream as equality. A country as it is, can never move forward unless we confront the past and acknowledge the wrongs that have defined our history. For example, the Biafran War that took place from July 1967 to 1970. We as a generation must come together in our numbers and define a new Nigeria, chart a new path for us to follow because the old way is not working anymore. It is an idealistic idea and a hard job, but it must be done. Thank you. Wow. Sugar. Orientation. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's um, I, 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 I don't know. And Nafisa, you must know that that's a huge thing. How do you reorient people? Mm. 200 million people for yeah, that it's, matter. Yeah, it's a, really, really, it's a really, really hard job to do. But to be honest, if you want to do yeah. something properly, then we have to do it right. That means yes. visiting the foundation of our history and our country. Yes. It's literally, it's not going to be an easy job, but it must be done. If we want to build a sustainable future for our country as it is, we can't keep on glossing it over and using yeah. super glue to paint the cracks. No, we can't do that anymore. But well, we have an agency for that, right? Yes, we do. Uh, but, we uh, but as you know, what it's, still it's still in existence. They had existence. a budget. But how did they set? How did they appoint people <laughs> into the agency? agency? Bearing in mind what we discussed earlier. It's not really. just about appointing people into the agency. Yes. But what what is their relevance Chuka. nowadays, and Chuka. what do they do presently? <laughs> Who's asking the, this question? Who's I, I, I deliberately brought it up because we once had that agency very functional in vibrant. this country, very yes. vibrant. At some point, I can still remember vividly some of the songs that I could associate with that institution. But today, Don't let yama yama spoil your life. you know. You, you see, <laughs> so, what but did it work, or was it just? It I, th works. I think it did because it uh, people remembered what they were talking about, and it was prevalent. Okay. I remember Andrew. Andrew, oh, yeah. Don't Don't check check out. Out. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah.
You are right. It, yes. it worked, and then suddenly. No, but now, now, seriously, yeah. mm -hmm. um, like I said, you can't legislate orientation. Mm -hmm. um, you have to live by example. Mm -hmm. That's the best orientation. You can't you legislate can. legislate orientation. Mm -hmm. You can't legislate a process. Yes. Let's see. By the end, this this show is. Then there will be nothing today. to legislate, right? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, yes, really. Most of the things that we legislate mm -hmm. are things that you need to show by your attitude. And the Fisad is talking about, uh, uh, talking, she's talking about equality. About how, uh, equality yes. but is not a, le a piece of legislation. It's intangible. It's intangible. That's the process yes. that Chuka was talking about mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Equality. Yeah. And so why should I be bothered that it is Hausa man that is the president? When I should be bothered, do I have the basic? And so why should the Hausa man look at me and say, he's not uh, Hausa or Fulani, he's um, from um, uh, Uneme. And so for that, he, even if he's qualified, he, sh he shouldn't be considered. So these are not, even if you legislate them, if the right attitude is not there, the young man who is going to sit down there and say, well, if I see the way you are treating others, why do you think... I want to be treated that way. You, yeah. uh, my, my, I would my... just like to chip in with like a quick story. You know, it brings everything basically back down to home. So I schooled in University of Nigeria, Amsuka. My father is from Lani. My mother is, you know, from Delta State. Okay. And one day I went to go and meet my course, uh, my course tutor to submit my registration form to her. And she saw my name and she looked at me. And that was the, um, I think that was the height of the time of the Boko Haram crisis. And she told me that, oh, so is your brothers that are killing my people. You know, how do you explain to that person that even your people are my people? Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the current state yeah. of our country. And I'm sure things are a whole lot. Imagine it's, if, it's, it's, you know, it's young people that are from, you know, intertribal marriages like myself, what they have to deal with. And this one is very, very divided. And it's, and it's getting worse by the day by the day. And we can't allow it to climb up the way. And that's why. Nefisa has said two things. Do do Nefisa has said, said, said two things that I want to pick on. She's talked about the Nigerian identity. Mm -hmm. And she's also talked about what's the Nigerian dream. Mm -hmm. She's talked about tribal and religious lines. Those are the fault lines that we have in Nigeria. Yeah. And how can we overcome? Mm -hmm. Looking at the fact that we're going to be 60 soon. What lessons have we learned? How do we A overcome man, huh? this, this divide, this tribal and religious? Early this morning, I had to, you know, wade into some, some conversation on WhatsApp, on a WhatsApp platform. It was bothering on religion and everybody suddenly became awake. You know, it's my religion. You don't say that. You don't that. It, it's always... And these are inherited and borrowed. Absolutely. I, I, I think the, the, the you know, uh, pr prosperity might also have to do with it. And I'll tell you why. An average American does not care that Jeff Bush was contesting to be president after his brother has just been president <laughs> and their father was president. Mm -hmm. That is three people in the same family. Mm -hmm. And nobody seemed to care. Mm -hmm. What made them able to do that, to equality. live like that? Equality. That's what Nefisat has said. Equality. equality. When you are treated equally, you really don't care where the, the yeah. man who is treating you yeah. comes from. And, and if, if I, yeah. I also want to, we had all of these things before now. People intentionally divide us along Correct. these lines and we allow them. And that's why I keep talking about orientation. orientation yeah. I remember I was just talking, just before the program, I was talking about having to grow up in a partly Christian home and partly Muslim home. We went to school, we didn't ask what, where are you from? Or what religion do you practice? It didn't practice? matter. We did IROK, we did BK. Nobody, you know, it was nobody's business. At the end of the day, we all came together. Like last week, I talked about, you know, a child from Arochuku having to travel to Wukari in Bauchi to school without the parents bothering how, whether that child will be okay. Yeah. And then you get to Wukari, you meet some parent, people there who will take you at their own child, not minding where you're coming from. But today, the first thing, even in Nigeria, state of origin, mm. local government of origin, mm. religion. Mm. What? What? You know, you know when, when, when you go back to that society yes. I mentioned, uh, when people are asking you for your religion, your gender, uh, they will ask below the line. 
and they will seek your consent first. Even in the state, at the state level, so, now people ask you, oh, you are from Edo State, what oh, part what, of Edo? What part of Edo? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, local so government, the then, then the then city, the tribe. The, oh, no. Before they now know where it's, to pigeon hold you. If we continue, and, and for me, I, I completely agree with Nefisat, we need to change all of this orientation. And not in our generation anyway. I but we should so, pass it on to yeah. the next generation sure. as a message. And that's why for me, every government that is coming on board should ensure that there is a message you want to pass, a message of equality right. and coercion. But yeah. when your attitude is that of it's inequality, correct. Then no what? matter how much you pass that yeah. message. But I'm still asking, what really is the Nigerian dream? The Nigerian dream should be that every Nigerian should be equal. Before that, the other, yes. Yeah. Is it really and equality? That's what she that says. Is it, 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 no, it will be. It will be. No, because it sums up everything. That. It sums up it everything. Sums up everything. Yeah. What it is is that I'm not saying that if you ask the average Nigerian what's the dream, they will tell you equality. Everything mm -hmm. they say, if 20 people are asked and you take those 20 answers, you will find out that equality, equality. will deal with it. It will make sure that you will get what you want um, and what you deserve, what you want, and what is good for you. Yeah, exactly. And that's really so, what we are all looking for. Nefisa is right in that what affects one eventually affects all, since no man is an island. No man is an island. Well, after the break, I speak on the reality of Nigerians harming Nigeria. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 